there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got a lot of fun DIY home decor crafts for you today also I'm joining in with a sweet friend of mine I'll explain those details just a little bit later so what are we waiting for let's get started Today we'll be working on DIY rustic farmhouse fall decor using mostly Dollar Tree supplies, so let's get started with project number one. Yes, we're working on another pumpkin. This is my medium pumpkin template I just cut out of some cardboard. It's about an 18 inch diameter circle. I'm going to be using this batting I got from Walmart. I love it because I love the texture on it and you get a lot of batting for a low price. And I've got my circle already cut. I'm going to use this large eye uh, opening doll needle you get about five to a pack at Walmart and some fishing line this is just a 30 pound test fishing line that part doesn't matter just some fishing line I've got one end of my needle uh, the fishing line knotted and we're going to start with putting our needle through our batting here you can see how it's part way out don't pull your needle all the way out and then bring it right back through to the front where you're working on and i'm about a half inch apart about a half inch from the top doesn't matter if your stitches apart get smaller or uh, bigger just as long as you're kind of doing this pleating motion so front to the back front to the back front to the back front and there once you get you know four or five on your needle or so <laughs> one doesn't fall off go ahead and pull all these through till you come to the end of your knot on that fishing line we're going to do it again we're going to go from the front to the back front back front back front back nice and easy pleating it so it looks like pleats at the top of a curtain right so you just keep doing that till you come all the way around and come right back close to where you started you know the knot of where you started go ahead and pull your needle off that line and then grab that knot and pull it out nice and long so you have two long pieces of fishing line here okay and then we're going to go ahead and stuff it with as much stuffing as you want and as you can see here different from my last pumpkin video we did not put any sections in our pumpkin here i'm going to use this from dollar tree it's the dollar tree plunger i've already got one cut off from a project last year about five inches tall and i had painted it a little bit and so i'm going to pull the two pieces of my fishing line together to kind of form a hole here and see how big it needs to be to fit our little uh plunger stem here once i know kind of how big it is I'll check it here once again. I'll start knotting this perfect, knotting this fishing line. I knot it about five or six times because fishing line is really, really slick. We don't want it to fall off. Okay. Then what I'll do is take that piece of plunger I had cut off and we're just going to use some Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here and we're going to get it into our opening. And now we have our stem and our pumpkin. Super cute. I love using this um, wood from the plunger because I like that little spiral at the top gives it personality now I'm going to take some muslin here I got this from Walmart about a two inch width here make a little slit with my scissors and then rip off that fabric just to give us a nice texture and we're going to do the same process we did with the pumpkin pleating it back and forth on a needle we're just going to use some regular thread here as you can see, we're going to make an easy, easy kind of shabby flower. So you start at one end. Again, I'm probably half inch in the top, about half inch part uh, between the stitches. And we're just pleating our fabric back and forth really fast on our needle. You get 10 or 11 or so on there. Pull it all the way through and continue on till you come to the end of your strip. My strip's probably about 30 inches long, I'm going to say. Just keep doing this nice and easy we'll be good at those pleats won't we when you come close to the end i'm going to go ahead and leave my needle on this because i'll use it again later you don't have to we're going to gather everything up nice and tight you can use your fabric tack glue or don't laugh at my glue gun you can use your hot glue <laughs> it's well used and we're just going to add your glue right onto our stitch area okay and we're just going to simply roll our flower along that stitched edge making sure the edges right here those raw edges stay nice and uh, flat here so just rolling it along just like that you see how kind of it's nice and flat so that's our bottom piece where we're going to glue and just keep adding glue along that stitched area and keep rolling your flower now if you didn't want to uh, finish using your thread here you could just once you glue everything together you can just knot it off cut off your excess thread but i'm going to take advantage of the thread and the needle i've still got here and i'm just going to do a couple of once i get everything glued a couple of little stitches here to secure it 
Again, you can skip this part, especially if you're using hot glue, but Fabri-Tac glue takes a little time to set up, so I'm just doing a couple of little stitches here. And then once I get, you know, that, I will make a little loop and run my needle through that loop a couple of times. One and two, and then I'll go ahead and pull it all the way through to make a knot and cut off the excess. Just like that, and we have a cute little shabby flower. Now I'm gonna use uh, this, I printed off into some fabric and I sewed around the edges, gonna make us a little tag. I will have a link in the description box for you, similar to these, but I will make it without the circle around it. You can print them on cardstock or onto your fabric. Now my cheapy little HP printer, I use this duck cloth fabric from Walmart. It's almost thick like canvas, and I just cut it the shape of, you know, a piece of copy paper, and it will print right on it. Not every machine will do that, so, you know, you can use the option of just printing it onto some cardstock and cutting it out, but my cheapy machine, because it's thick and stiff, that duck canvas-like fabric runs through nice, okay? Setting that aside, I have some raffia here from Dollar Tree, and I curled it. Now, raffia is kind of waterproof, but I figured out a way to curl it up without having to buy curly raffia. So I'm going to share that with you right here on the process I did. It takes a little time. So I took some raffia, I stuck it in a bowl of water here, and you want it to sit for at least like maybe an hour until you pull up the raffia and it looks sort of transparent like this. Okay, if it's not transparent, it's not going to work as well because believe me, I tried it, tested and tried it. Then I'm going to take some and kind of, you know, pull off the excess water here, wipe it with the rag, and I got a really fat paintbrush and I wrapped it around this paintbrush handle. Anything you can find is nice and fat. And then I took my industrial heat tool and you heat it, heat it, heat it until it's pretty well dry and that transparency is gone. And then I'll pull it off of my paintbrush and I'll heat it some more. And then at the end, I end up with this nice curly raffia. So I'm just taking some of that raffia and I'm just kind of tying in a little knot here at one end, keeping it all together so it's easier to glue and making a nice little pile here just like this. And then I'll go ahead and use the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and kind of glue it right up against that stem. I like how this raffia turned out curly. It just gives it some fun, right? Now I've got another piece of the ripped fabric here like we did on the flower. It's about an inch wide. And I'm just going to make a little bow out of it nice and easy. I did two pieces about an inch wide, ripped them. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that right in front of the raffia. I want to hide that little knot and stuff there. And then I've got this edge I want to, you know, cover up. So I've got some of this wire rope from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to wrap it around that fabric there because I want that back to look finished off and kind of curl it around my stem and hanging off my stem nice and kind of curly and give it some texture. Just like that. Easy, easy. I love how this turned out. Nice, easy pumpkin. And that finishes all it off. I've got some crochet trim here from Dollar Tree. I love this crochet trim. Tied it in a knot. A little bow knot and then glue that knot to our center there and then we're going to glue <clears throat> excuse me our flower down right over the top of that kind of fix everything up here easy easy and then we're going to take our little uh, I've got a little mini clothes pin here and we're going to glue it to our little quote so you can glue it to fabric quote or your cardstock quote either one and then kind of clip it to the bow and then cute and then I'm going to take some really thin twine I've got like three pieces tied it into a bow and I'm going to shove it right under the right end of that flower and near our little tag and that makes this project complete Before we move on to our next craft, let's see which sweet friend is joining me today for more fun fall inspiration. 
Today I have my beautiful, wonderful friend, Lisa Marie. Her channel is Crafting My Best Life with Lisa Marie here on YouTube. I love Lisa Marie. We get along so well. We talk all the time. Her DIYs are so innovative and creative. They're quick, they're easy, but they're original, unique, one-of-a-kind, beautiful designs that I just know you'll love, and you can't help but fall in love with her as well. Um, we have collaborated before, and we had so much fun. We thought we'd do it again, and maybe, wink, wink, we'll do another one again soon. Take a look at this. This is one of her previous projects she made in another video. She used Dollar Tree embroidery hoop and a hat, and made this super cute fun fall basket you're just gonna love her designs i will have her channel link and her video link in my description box so make sure after you watch my video you go check out all she has to offer for you show her some love and if you're coming over from lisa marie's channel welcome welcome to my channel i hope you find lots of inspiration here i'm glad to have you along on this diy crafting journey so now let's get started with project number two We'll be using lots of goodies here from Dollar Tree, including this little metal envelope that came out. We're going to use one of these square pieces, the five pack of, you know, wood pieces from Dollar Tree, of course, all from Dollar Tree, unless I say something different. This little metal house, arrow, I don't know, could be a house, could be an arrow from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm also going to use uh, this as a base. I know Dollar Tree has thick squares. Mine doesn't have it anymore. And then this other little scrap wood piece on top. If you don't have that thick wood base, you could use one of these squares and place a second little scrap piece on top. Only if you want like a double layer, I did. You could use something like this for your base. That works too. I'm going to use one of these slat wood pieces from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut it down so I have a short piece for a base and then a longer piece on top. Um, here you can see this kind of a longer piece. I'm going to use this scrap wood so I have like a long piece here. I'm going to use these woods words from Dollar Tree. <laughs> Try to say this so fast I jumble everything up. Wood hearts from Dollar Tree came out at Valentine's and then I'm going to bring in some of these hay bales. I know Dollar Tree has these. I have ones from you know Hobby Lobby. Same thing a bunch of different pumpkins from Dollar Tree and Hobby Lobby. Whatever you kind of have in your stash here. Some wood leaves. My favorite crochet trim that ours hasn't gotten in a while. I'm down to one more spool. Some berries things like that so what i want to do is place this envelope on top of this but if i do that you can see the metal from that house sticks out in front i don't like that and if i turn it this way i don't have enough of a ledge and i want a little bit of a ledge in front of this envelope here so i'm just going to unscrew this little house arrow and then re-screw it into a different position on its little base so that none of that metal shows we're going to use this of course to glue our envelope to so you know it has a way to sit upright i'm going to be using some of scrapbook paper some from my supplies some from Hobby Lobby my favorite little orange dot paper for our project today you all know I like to bring in my scrapbook paper I'm going to trace my envelope here trace it for the front and back and get it cut out the back I'm going to cover completely because we're going to want to kind of cover up that metal part right so I'm not going to cut this short like I usually do on all my pieces get this cut out so you see action at its finest <laughs> perfect and then we move on to the front piece I cut it out so it's a little short all the way around I think I went in about a quarter inch short this is about my second pass through of cutting it so that when you stick it inside the envelope here you see a little bit of that perimeter there which will of course sand off a little bit later you'll see what I'm talking about. I've got all my pieces cut to fit that and that little square piece of wood that's going to go inside the envelope and the heart. I'm taking everything to my sewing machine because I love to sew on my papers. Those of you might be new to my channel, I sew on my papers to give it a nice real country-like looking texture. I sew on it just like it's regular fabric. Don't be afraid that you're sewing on paper. I use a size 9 or 10 needle because it, you know, it goes through that thin paper really well. You can use cotton or all polyester thread. My stitch length is set on 4. It only goes to 5. I have a cheapy machine here just for this. And my tension set on 4. You can see the sewing here. And once that's done, I come in and add a little rustic texture with the open end of my scissor blades and I scrape along the edges just to give it that rustic texture like I said and plus it helps you know your paper to kind of stand up off of what you're gluing it onto. Putting that aside I'm going to use this Waverly Antique Wax and we're just going to go around all my pieces here give it a little staining just kind of the edges in about an inch or so all the way around on some of the pieces 
some pieces I don't do too much because I know it's going to be glued one on top of the other, that kind of thing. I'm going to glue the or uh, paint this as well. Just pretty much everything I'm staining it all, okay? <laughs> it's easier for you just to, you know, stain it all. There it is. I said it. Stain my little heart. Perfect. And I'll stain my envelope here. And this is what I talked about earlier. I just sanded off some of that paper there so that I have some of that wood showing. You don't have to do that. You could have left that white around it. It's perfectly wonderful. Okay. And then I don't like the shininess of this. So I'm just taking some of that sandpaper block you get from Dollar Tree and just sanding it down a little bit. Just kind of toning that shine down. Just a little too shiny for me. Again, this is optional. And then I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue here. You can use E6000. And we're going to add it onto our little uh, arrow house and glue our envelope right on top just like that. Perfect. And now we're going to go ahead and add our paper to the front of our little wood square. I'm double layering it here. Cardstock on top and little uh, regular paper on the front of that. I like to kind of double layer going around. And then we're going to start gluing everything together. Remember my bottom piece, my base is a double layer. You don't have to have it a double layer. I just want to add that little texture to it using wood glue. We're going to add our little uh, base to the top. I'm kind of doing the top and the bottom separate. Once that's set up, then I'll go ahead and glue this piece to our bottom base right then we're going to go ahead and I know that's a little fast but you know just kind of gluing things together we're going to go ahead and glue our paper to the back to cover that up and then we're going to go ahead and add our paper into the front of our envelope to cover that stuff up I know some of this is a little fast because, gosh, this video was so long, you guys. I had it at 40 minutes. I really had to cut it down. I'm going to use the screws from this metal word that came off one of those circle signs from Dollar Tree just to give a little texture. You don't have to do this. It's just the little fine details I like to add. Save the little metal word for later. I just thought it would be really cute like, like the note was, you know, uh, screwed into our envelope. Okay, and then I'm going to glue this whole thing to the top of our little base here. Now I've got some twine here I've, from Dollar Tree, just tied it in a little bow, and I'm going to add some wood beads also from Dollar Tree. They've just upped their game with some of their crafts, huh? Set that aside. I'm going to take this wood word. Yeah, we all know it's from Dollar Tree. I'm going to kind of glue it onto our piece off to the side and add our little heart. So it's kind of hanging off our sign a little bit set that aside we're going to go toward the bottom here i'm just going to glue on a little wood leaf so any wood leaf anything you want to glue here really but i wanted to add leaves and pumpkins and hay bales you know the normal stuff so glue that leaf onto the side glue our hay bale on and glue our pumpkins on i added some those little beads over the top of the hay bale and the hay bale and the reason for my double base is to give us room to kind of glue our pumpkins kind of sideways you know pay attention where you're gluing it I added in just certain spots on a pumpkin so I can lay the pumpkins, you know, in different positions. Just fun, fun, fun. So that's the reason for the double base. See, if I didn't have a double base here, I couldn't have my pumpkin coming down lower like I'm going to do here. See, and that's why I did that. Adding in some moss here. Just going to kind of tuck it in and around the spots to help kind of hide like stems from that little, you know, berry pick and, you know, any glue that might be poking out or anything like that and give it a little more texture. That makes this bottom piece, you know, done once I add some moss nice and easy. And then I've got a little moss up at the top there I'm going to glue in. So I wanted a little bit more room here. I thought I'd have a, a little more room to kind of glue the pumpkin in there, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to glue this into our little letter into our envelope. And then I've got a clothespin here. I'm going to add a little glue and clothespin that bow with the beads right to the center and then glue a little wood leaf right in it as well. Not off our ends where our beads are so they don't fall off our little twine bow. Yeah, I wanted a little more room on the front, but it wasn't quite enough room to add a pumpkin. So I come in here and add a little pumpkin right around to the back side of our envelope right here, just so it's peeking out just a tiny, tiny bit. And then kind of, you know, brings the bottom to the top all together unified. And that makes this project complete.
let's move on to our last project, number three. So for this project, I'm going to be using this oval piece from Dollar Tree and these wood boards also from Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to cut these wood boards a little bit in weird places because I love this. I love the knots and this sappy little area. I want to keep that intact, okay? So, you know, you don't have to cut it where I cut it, but basically you just want two pieces of wood. It's about three and a half inches in width and about eight and a half inches in length. Okay. I'm going to use this letter C from Walmart. I think Dollar Tree has some wood letters. Ours doesn't, but I'm going to work this into a stem. Okay. You'll see how I cut it up later. Here's my wood pieces all cut out, ready to go. And um, coming up, here's my letter C. I'm trying to kind of arrange it so it looks like a C again. <laughs> um, I don't have that little piece right over here. That one, I kind of cut that out but see how this part can look like a stem and this part can look like a stem I'm going to use the smaller piece just because the size works better with what I'm working with as you can see here and then once that's ready to go I'm going to take everything outside with my electric sander and I'm going to sand everything like really wonky and off so nothing is perfectly perfect even the little oval so you can see here like on this piece I kind of went in on pieces my oval see here I kind of went in there and then my stem doesn't look so perfectly sanded I wanted it to look funky Okay, so this is what we're going to start with our base. I'm going to use this Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color terracotta for the main pieces of the pumpkin. And then I'll use this Waverly Antique Wax, mix it with water, and we'll use it like a stain, of course, as we usually do on our stem. So I'm coming around. My thought here is I was going to paint the whole entire pumpkin and just leave it painted. And then I decided, because again, I want that little sap and knotty areas to show, I decided that it just didn't have enough because you can see here as I'm painting, I'm actually painting the whole oval top. Um, but then I decided I wanted a little more personality to it. So I end up using some scrapbook paper for the top. We'll come to that in a minute. So everything's kind of painted up and ready. And then, of course, staining up this stem. And then once I get everything all dry, I'll take it outside with my sander, as you can see here, and sand everything up. Okay, so you can leave it like this. I'll paint it. I think it looks perfectly wonderful. I just wanted, you know, that little bit more personality to it. So I've got some scrapbook paper here. I decided on these three pieces and we're going to, I trace everything and then I cut it out. When I cut everything out, I cut it about an eighth an inch shorter all the way around. So you see all that sanding and painted we did on the wood. Otherwise, what do we do that for, right? So this is what I did is I traced around the pieces and then I come in that eighth of an inch in and I redraw a new perimeter pattern here. Okay, want to take you on this process. It's been a while since I've done this in case we have some new people coming on board here. Just like that. And then I come in and I cut that out. Nice and easy say that a lot because really it is all nice and easy <laughs> and then I'm going to use that piece because I'm going to double layer my papers and I'm going to trace that for my piece and then come in and do the same process for the second layer that's going to go on top of this cardstock here okay and then I'll cut that all out wonderful finishing that up and we're just I'm just covering the front of the pumpkin and in the front and back of the stem, okay? And then we're going to come in with some wood glue here and we're going to cut our two, or cut, or glue our two cut pieces together. So we have one nice unit here. I'll go ahead and clamp that a little bit, of course. And then we're going to glue our little oval top. And I'll just set something heavy on top of that till that sets up. And then off camera, I'll go ahead and glue the stem to the top just to save some time here. Okay. All right. So for the back, I decided to use this from Dollar Tree, this little easel piece. I stained it with some Waverly Antique Wax. We're going to glue that on later, and that's going to help our pumpkin to set up. All right. And now I'm, you can see I've sewn all my paper pieces here and I'm coming in with my scissor blades and I'm going to scrape along the edges to give us that rustic texture. And thank you to Mona for giving me that idea of using the easel on the back. <laughs> Forgot to thank you a minute ago. My brain was one step ahead. 
it's perfect because you need a kind of a bigger, you know, easel for the back of this, right? So that works perfectly and our pumpkin will sit upright because we have kind of thin wood. Once everything's all distressed, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing our layers on here. We're going to glue our cardstock down first and then our other little dot paper right on top. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and glue our pieces to the front and back of our stem. So we have a little personality here with some papers here and then some just painted. And see, I left the back just painted because we're going to add that easel on the back, so I cover it with paper. I'm going to use this mesh tubing from Dollar Tree, get a few things coming up here. Some of these flowers from Dollar Tree, again, anything you have in your supplies, some of this, you know, burlap trim. Some of this lace ribbon, I'm down to one left. Ours usually has it in. They're just not getting it in. This decorative reed that ours just got in, I'm going to use some of these. I went and bought like eight packs. This from last year, this kind of whitewashed, you know, wood stuff, I'm going to tear off a couple of these. And then I'm going to use some wire rope here. There'll be a few more bits and bobbles coming in, but I'm going to use some of this wire rope around our stem. I love adding wire rope and stuff around stem um, just to give it some texture. I just think that gives it some fun. I'm going to get this glued on with our Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here. We'll cover all this up, of course, all this uh, end of the wire and stuff like that. Once we get that down, I'm going to add some moss around here. I'm going to add it to the front and the back side because even though I'm not going to really add decoration around the back, I do still want it to look, you know, nice and finished off and, and cover up kind of the seam where the pumpkin meets that wood there a little bit just to, you know, make it look nice. Just a little bit, just a tiny. Use some of this mesh tubing. I love this stuff. I'm just going to put it in a little knot here. That way it's easier for gluing. So we're just going to start layering different things. I have this ribbon in my supply. I don't know where I got it, but I love it, love the texture of it. So I cut a long piece in half here, and then the part that I cut, I just pulled on the threads to give it that fringe like the other side. So I have a nice little fringy piece. You don't have to do any of this. Just take a piece of ribbon and do what I do. <laughs> and then I'll just tie a little knot in the center so it's you know easy to glue to, just like I did that mesh tubing. But this just adds the texture, you know, adding that little fringe and stuff. Just think about things like that. You know, you're texturing and you're layering. I forgot to add my leaves in first. These are some leaves from Dollar Tree uh, thing here. So I got to gotta pick up my moss and all that stuff and add it underneath. They're just from a Dollar Tree pick. Wanted to add some of that orange in, a little bit of greenery in there. It's a, orange kind of matches the paper. So I'm going to add a little bit more moss here up on top. And then I'm going to add in some of those curly stems from that little pack I showed you to kind of give us the curly tendrils of a pumpkin. So top and bottom. I add in my little crochet bow. I love to do that, leaving the tails a little bit long to give us some texture hanging down. And then add in that crow or uh, burlap trim. I'm going to add in some of those little sticks from that one thing. I've got a little bit of curly raffia left over from our little pumpkin project at the beginning, so I'm adding that in there, and then a, just a burlap flower and another little flower. Burlap's from my supply, and that flower, again, like I said earlier, is from Dollar Tree. I've got a wood slice I'm going to add in here, and another one of these that I printed off on the fabric, like we discussed earlier. Again, I'll have that link in my description box. Take you to my blog. You can print those out. A mini clothespin you can get from Dollar Tree. We're just going to glue that right onto our fabric and then we're going to glue that log slice down or wood slice and then glue this little quote right on top. This is kind of my go-to designs I love to do. Add about four or five pieces of twine ribbon here into a bow and then I've got a little metal star for my supply and I'm just going to kind of glue that in right at the tippy top. Needs a little something up there just like that. And I'm going to add some of this covered wire I get from Hobby Lobby. Um, I'll buy like four or five of these at a time because the top just needs a little something more. The bottom is so heavy, the top needs some more, believe it or not, on that stem. So I'm just going to curl that up and add that with that other curly stem. That way it just kind of balances out. And then we're going to glue our little easel onto the back. And then that makes this project complete.
So I hope you enjoyed all the projects that I came up with today. Please leave me a comment down below and you know the drill. Let me know which project is your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're checking things out, you know, you just wandered in here on your own, or maybe you're coming over from Lisa Marie's channel, make sure before you click off, if you're digging what you saw, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Lisa Marie, thank you, thank you, thank you for collaborating with me today. And remember everyone, I will have her channel and video link in the description box. Make sure you go over and check out all the unique, beautiful, wonderful things she is going to show you in this video. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Don't be so busy doing amazing things in your life that when you receive an invitation from the Almighty God to dine with Him at His table, you only end up at the drive-thru. Paint this picture. When you receive that invitation, you think, oh, he wants to be with me, talk with me. Oh my gosh, Jesus, thank you. But I've got a long checklist of things I'm doing right now. There's a lot of things I need to get done. And maybe your Bible is open. You haven't read it in a while. You know it, you love it, but you just have so many things on that checklist that needs your attention. So you open that invitation. You have a decision to make with your plans to attend. Yes, no, or maybe. You check the maybe box and you give it some thought and you decide, oh, I better be cordial and stop by for a moment. So you get there, you walk by the table, you admire it, you take in that beautiful setting, you see all the beautiful plating, you marvel at the exquisite preparation of food. But remember, you're super busy doing things right now. So you just grab a quick snack off the table you even take an extra minute to stand up on the chair to get a view of her head because you want to snap a picture of the table with your phone because everybody else has got to see the beauty of this table. And you really do want to remember, but you can come back later once things have settled down. You snap your picture, you post it to social media, but before you go, you at least want to take a moment, be respectable to the host. So, you know, you thank them for asking you to come by, but relay your apologies because really, you're super busy right now. That really makes you think, doesn't it? Don't use this invitation as a quick rest stop on your whirlwind highway of life. I realize there's a lot of situations in your world right now that you cannot control, but you can absolutely decide whether you want that rest stop to become a drive through detour off the main travel route, or if you want to rethink your maybe decision on that invitation, change it to a firm yes, and reserve your seat at the table at a parking spot at that beautiful scenic pullover view on the side of the road for a full rest of dinner with the king. It's your decision whether you want to stop and take time, chat, communicate with the king, or if you just prefer the drive-by. Stay a while, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's not what's on the table, it's who's at the table. If you can just sit down at the table and feed what he has for you, your life will flow with his goodness and mercy. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all will be added unto you. So what's it going to be? What box are you going to check on your invitation? Are you going to go through the drive through Or open the door and sit down a while at the table? It's your choice. But the king would love to spend some time with you. Or he wouldn't have sent you that invitation. I thank you for sharing your time with me. And I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.